superstars. So you have asked, I have listened. Today is all about shouldering. And I'm actually gonna make this a couple of episodes. I've just finished filming the second episode with this little guy here. We're gonna show you in this episode today exactly how to ride the shoulder in, what it looks like, what the aids are, and in a real visual way where even I'm standing still sometimes just to show you where the leg positions are. It's really, really cool. Hopefully we'll demystify the whole shoulder in aspect. Then in an episode coming up, we're gonna show you how to start to do baby shoulder ends or ultimately how to train it on little guys like this. He's only four and we're already starting to play with that as well. So get into it. Oh, oh sorry, lovely. Little bit afraid. <laughs> so get into this one. I hope you enjoy it. And again, guys, as always, there's the real life conversation about shoulder in with my Dressage Mastery members as well. So make sure you click in and find where that is because that is absolutely so helpful. All right. Hope you enjoy it. Today, we're going to have a little look at how your seat affects shoulder in, okay? And what we're looking at again is how where you sit creates shoulder in or helps shoulder in and what exactly we're trying to achieve with a shoulder in, okay? So with a leg yield, we learnt we're trying to enhance shoulder control to make sure that we've got it and we're trying to increase suppleness. And we showed that as we increased his suppleness, how the connection came because of the increased level of suppleness. He had rhythm, increased level of suppleness, equal connection, i.e. Fancier, fancier way of going. Same thing with the shoulder in, we're gonna not only look at where our seat fits in, but why we use it and where we use it, okay? So, we're gonna continue on. You guys are gonna watch me and we're gonna get this done. So again, this is G, G is nine, and G is a horse that we got relatively at a high level. He did lots and lots of tricks, but not particularly well. So we spent a lot of time teaching him how to do things better, okay? And when we do this, I'm gonna show you everything in a basic trot. Nothing too fancy, just a basic trot, okay? So, what are we looking for in a shoulder end? So if we have a look at his legs now, we should see two clear tracks and they might waver slightly because he's a bit green and he's having a bit of a spook, but it gives you an idea. So you should have two clear tracks. Now, he already is spooking a bit and wants to fall to the inside and my instinct is to sit to the outside. But actually, if I put weight to the inside and then just stop telling him where the shoulders go, you see, he actually goes into shoulder in without me even trying, okay? So it shows you how much your weight, where your seat goes, makes such a difference. So let's have a look at that if we actually make it shoulder in. So I sit to the inside and naturally you see, the shoulders just go in because that's where my weight's going. It's creating space out here, okay? So then, let's do that slightly more purposeful because what did we learn from leg yield? We learned from leg yield how to control the shoulder. So now, we're gonna use our weight just to ask the shoulder to come in. Yeah, and this is when people say, go around the inside leg. This is what they're talking about. We think, push the horse around my inside leg. That's not what they mean. It means that the horse is bent naturally around your inside leg, okay? So again, length down the inside leg. His shoulder came in naturally. And then, because now I can control the shoulder, which I learned in leg yield, I can say how steep I want it. If I want it more steep, I ask for more. If I want for less steep, I ask for less. Very, very simple. And then, how am I doing that? So step one is weight in the hole. Shoulder comes in automatically. I don't need to do anything, okay? But then watch me if I don't worry about my seat. If I just put my inside leg on and my outside rein on. Do you see how much I have to pressure him into that? Okay, so let's watch that again. 
even from a corner, because that's the easiest spot to do it. Don't think about my seat, even sit to the outside. I've got my inside leg and my outside rein. And you see how I still get it, but it's in a really forced way. You can see that the horse is going, oh, I don't know, Leash, I don't really want to do that, but if you say so, okay. Woo Trot, good boy. Okay, and you can see it annoyed him. But again, here, put my weights into, my, into the banana, and there he goes. Comes in, you can see the tempo change because he's coming back to me a little bit, and my shoulders, or me controlling the shoulders, just tells him how deep or steep I want him to go. And then I go forward again. So all I do now for shoulder in is really think it. Think, sit in the banana, there you go. How simple is that? It's really not complicated. Yeah, it's that easy. So then, once I understand the shapes that I'm creating with my seat, then I can make things different. So for example, I might now go, I'm going to make, sit into the little part of the, the banana, create a shoulder in, then I'm going to change the bend, but still stay in the banana, which becomes a rod bear, and then go sideways in that. Good oh boy. And we ran out of room, but again, you get the idea. Doing that, isn't it amazing? My questions, I've started playing with shoulder in. Oh, good girl. Just yeah. a little bit. Like, and, um, and I just turned him off, like you said, and he, he did it. <laughs> and I went back. And I tried again. I nearly fell off with shock. <laughs> and, but I don't. And then I tried the other way too. <laughs> I love it when it's not a fluke. That makes it feel so good. I was like, wow. But I, what, and I only did like a few steps. So what, I, and I only asked him a little bit to move in. Yeah. So what I don't know how to judge is how do I judge how much to ask him to come in off the, the wall and for how long, like, I've got no idea because I don't want to do it too long and he yep. loses it. Yep. So. Good question. I'm very, very impressed for you. This is mega. Like, this is probably mega. So, okay. So how do you figure out how much? Mm, I'm trying to think of exact ways. Okay. So a shoulder in is three tracks. Okay. Yeah. So shoulder in is where the, I have to do it. Otherwise, I, my brain can't do it. The outside hind leg is on the wall by itself, yeah? The outside front leg and the inside hind leg are on the same track in line. Yes. And then the inside front leg is all by itself. Yeah. Okay? So that's actually the angle of a shoulder in, okay? If you yes. go any further over than that, it's actually a leg yield. Okay, yep. Okay, so that's your first measure. Yep. Between getting to that line of the three tracks and coming, so coming from two tracks to three tracks, so two tracks to shoulder in, whatever's in between that, how to tell how far to go is all about rhythm and balance. Okay. So in the beginning, do the tiniest little bit you can and say to yourself, does his rhythm feel the same? Does he feel the same in my range? And stay at that little tiny part until he does. Then go a bit further and a bit further and a bit further. And you know yeah. when you've gone too far because the rhythm will change or or and or he'll feel different in your range. Okay. Yeah. If that happens, either abort mission completely and just go back to two track or just decrease your angle slightly until you feel the rhythm comes back and he feels the same in both range. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Does that help? Yes. And yes. then that applies the same for how long you do it. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But what I always say about how long you do it is shorter lines, even on a school horse are much better for them than longer lines. So if you do a shoulder in, say every 12 meters, versus a shoulder in for the entire 60 metres, 
going shoulder and straight, shoulder and straight, shoulder and straight every 12 metres is actually more gymnastic and better for your horse anyway. Yep. Yeah. So, the, yeah, so don't feel pressure to go the whole length. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You might yeah. want to just so, so, so you say you can. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then when you've got that, you can take it off the wall. Yes. Yeah. So when you feel like you can put that shoulder wherever you want, whenever you want, then you can take it off the wall. Okay. Yep. Okay. Right. Yes. Good. Yeah. Really good. Okay. It's really, really good. Yeah. Mm, she got it. She got it. That's awesome. And then if you want to mix it up anything after that, so once you've got the shoulder in, try to make the travel happen. So we can also use shoulder in in the canter. Very good boy. It doesn't have to be just the trot. And again, you can see if I put the length down that inside of the banana, the outside of his body becomes big. That's what brings the shoulder in. And you also see, good boy, how you get that more collected canter. When he's done it well, because that's hard for him to sit like that, I then go free. And again, my seat does that. My seat says, I'm moving bigger so you can move bigger. To bring it small, I don't think small. I put my weight down the inside, the small bit of the banana and think, good boy, good boy, and think, make the outside rib cage space. And there is your shoulder four or your shoulder in. Very, very good. And then again, his reward, I say go. By big, big, big hips. Same thing, small. Yeah. Isn't that exciting, guys? It shows that where you sit makes all the difference. So you watch if I sit to the outside and do it. He'll probably, well, there you go. Do you see that? He tried to do a flying change on me. So here I just walk him. And then I canter again. And I do it again sitting in the correct spot. There you go. Which is to the inside. They'll always make themselves bigger where you are not. So again, shoulder in by putting my seat to the inside. Very good. Now I straighten that. Shoulder in by putting my seat to the outside. Oh, he does a change for me again. And back again, good boy. Because he understands that if I move my seat, he's going to um, follow that. He's going to make himself bigger where I am not. So your seat is so important. Again, it doesn't matter how still you sit. It doesn't matter how good you get this. It just matters that you attempt to stay. Okay? This guy is quite a wobbly horse. So when you see it, we'll change the rein here. When you see it, when I do it messy, it will be messy because he's not as schooled as Wessel. Wessel's got 10 years on this horse. But you'll notice that it still works. And it doesn't matter if he gets the incorrect lead. It doesn't matter if he makes a mistake. I just don't respond. And that's the most important thing is that no matter what, I don't respond. I just know what my rule is and I stick to it. So again, here I go. Little canter. It's okay. Good boy. Good boy. And then again, I bring the inside of my body long. And there he has it. Now, if I do it a bit messy, let's say, okay, I don't quite, but I'm not quite staying there. You can see me really moving around, but because I'm constantly going back here, even if it's a bit wrong, even if it's there, he still stays there. And even if I do that much, so maybe he changes over, which he didn't, but he might have. I just keep trying my hardest to go back to where I am. And if you watch the legs, sometimes it's four track, sometimes it's two track. Sometimes it's not quite there, but if I just keep reverting back, it doesn't matter even if I only get it right once in a blue moon or every now and then. If I just keep trying and keep thinking, no, that is my goal, it comes. So remember, always think of that. Can I just try my hardest to follow the rule. And what is the rule? Whatever part of the rib cage I'm trying to make bigger, 
sit away from it, okay? Again, you saw, even if you're struggling, even if you're not perfect, it doesn't matter. Keep going. Because any resemblance of correct is better than pretty and wrong. You're more likely to succeed eventually if you think of that. Nobody does a perfect job in dressage. Nobody gets it 100% right, but everybody is always trying to. And that's all that matters. Think of simple things like how do I open a door? I know that I turn the doorknob. It doesn't matter if you have no, you're not able to do that yet. You're not going to then go and try and plant a tree to open the door, are you? You're like, oh, that doesn't make sense. I'm not going to do that. It's the same thing with the horses. Con it's just a general rule, create space where you want them to go. It's all logical, it all makes sense because we've all heard horses move away from pressure. <gasps> oh my God, so we've all known it, but it's so hard to get, we get clouded by all of these messages. It's not that the messages are wrong, it's you've just got to do one step at a time. So first step is how do I get my horse to follow my aids? How do I get a better shoulder in? How do I get a better leg yield? How do I get even just stay on the circle to understand where my body weight makes a difference to where he goes? If I want him to go left, I need to give him, sorry, go right. <laughs> I need to give him space to go right. You need to create a hole for him to fill with his body. The more you understand that, the better you're going to be. This lesson today isn't about shoulder in. This lesson today is about how your mindset and how your body makes a difference to where your horses go. And today it was in relation to the shoulder in. If you're standing there going, I get it, Leash, I get it, but I can't make my body do it, that's fine. There's loads of exercises you can do off the horse to be able to do that, okay? Because it's not about having a strong body. It's being able to communicate with every single vertebrae in your body. It's being able to communicate with your leg and saying to this leg, hey, please go longer. And when you go longer, please don't fall to the inside. Please don't fall to the outside. Please don't fall off. All of these things. Doing that, isn't it amazing? Is you know when you're talking about controlling of the shoulders and of the horse and if the horse doesn't respond push more with the rein do you mean push it forward so it's a really good um question so what she's asking is when you're going around a corner and you feel that the horse's shoulder bulges out okay it goes out like this i described to you at one point about putting more pressure on the shoulder with the rein so it's not putting your hands more forward, no. It's also not putting your hands more back. It's about, and I'm trying to find something that I can use as an analogy. Here we go. It's about, this is the distance that my reins are. One rein, two reins, imagine they're the same size. This is the distance that my reins are. This is the horse's shoulders and this is his chest. That's his little cleavage, okay? Megan, stop laughing at me. I can tell you you're trying to stop it. This is the reins. This is your chest, all right? If the horse leans this way, what I'm saying is, is don't move this rein. So if your rein is here and in line with, you know, that part of my T-shirt, and I try to push my head so it, or push my shoulder out, just don't move this rein. You've got to hold this rein against the shoulder that he's pushing. So you've got to think to yourself, no horsey, you have to stay here. These are immovable objects. These two reins only move forward and back and open if I want them to, not if you force them out. So you just stay here, okay? Another way to think about it, and this is the way I think about it, is I think that these are like two electric pads. You know those things, what are you, the, the defibrillator, the yeah think of it like that so you've got yeah, your shoulders in between those two reins and i've got to get as close as i can between them but if i lean on one and i kind of get pushed 
either side until I go, okay, well, here's the good bit. Who's here's the happy bit. I just want to stay in here and this is happy and I don't need to lean on those reins and push my shoulders. So they kind of keep their shoulders in between those two reins. Pilates. Pilates will make the world of difference. It teaches you how to communicate with your body. So it's your, the future is there and it can be this quick and you can be this successful and you will do an amazing job. You just have to give yourself permission to take it one step at a time. Give yourself permission to up the long side, only get it once instead of getting it the whole long side. So again, let's do it one more time and let's look at it like that. So let's give ourselves expectations. So I want a canter again. And there we have a canter stride. He tried to canter off on the wrong lead, but again, because my weight was away from the outside hind, he was able to canter on the correct lead. So everything's fine here. Let's say a shoulder four to pee, okay? So now I'm struggling. Oh, okay, so what I want now is just that I keep canter, good. And then I want to get my shoulder one centimetre to the inside for this corner. Good boy, that's it. That's okay, guys. Okay, let's say I've only got one arm and I just can't quite sit up yet. Okay, I've got a canter, that's good. So I just want the shoulder in for two sets. One, two, good boy. And then I go again. One, two, good boy. And then because I've got two in a row, I might move to four. Or I might even say, okay, I don't want to make it better than that. I want to do it with a better seat. So I want to do two strides shoulder in and sit up by five centimetres more. So one, two, oh, okay, let's make balance. I went again. Do you see how easy that is? When you give yourself permission to make those mistakes, it's so important. Give yourself measurable things. And people go, oh, well, you can't just do two meters and, and that will be fine for the test. Of course it won't, but start it in chunks. Because two meters very quickly equals four meters, very quickly equals 12 meters. And all of a sudden you're doing it for a pre-St. George test. It's not that hard. Give yourself permission to have really small wins. Yeah, and you saw what I did there. I went all floppy and got it all wrong and I got the shoulder four. But then I had a decision. Do I do more shoulder four for more steps or do I do that shoulder four for two steps better? And I chose to sit up and do it better. That's what you've got to give yourself permission to do, guys. Give yourself permission to understand what you see other people do is the end result. You can overtake so many people that you watch if you give yourself permission to systematically learn and take time. And then failure isn't failure anymore. Failure is pre-organized. It's fun because you could either go, oh, I only made it two strides or woohoo, I made it two strides. And why are we in this sport? Uh, I'm pretty sure we're in it to have fun. If you're not having fun, what's the point? And you can have fun and you can succeed if you take control and do it in your own way. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Write some aha moments for me down the bottom. Tell me what you've realized from this. You've seen the leg yield now. You've seen the, the shoulder in now. Some of you have done the Pilates now and you've seen how it's not about being stronger or even fitter or skinnier or anything like that. It's just being able to communicate with your body again. Talk to me about what you found out. I love to hear and tell me what you want to see. Tell me more. Tell me what I can do because I'm new at this, guys, and I want to give you what, I can, what, what, my, what helps you because I love this sport and I've nearly left this sport millions of times because I've felt like I haven't been able to, haven't been able to breathe, aren't getting anywhere. The list goes on. It doesn't need to be like that. It really doesn't. It is as simple as it sounds. And just focus on this one thing, one month of All About You 
all about your feet. So I hope you enjoyed that guys. Please in the comments below, write anything that I can help you with. And also remember about our May competition where you can all win um, 500 pounds. Well, not all of you, wish I could do that. One of you can win 500 pounds. And also all of you can get free dressage mastery memberships for the month of May. So again, look at the links below and you'll work out what's going on there. Can't wait to see you soon guys. Mwah. Bye.